I'm Stephen Masawa, welcoming uh, members of Mbale Church of Christ, those listeners outside there, and to share from the book Paul is writing, but understanding that Paul is writing to Christians who are undergoing suffering, both Jews and Gentiles. And uh, we say that Christians always are faced with the struggles. These are issues from their past lives, adjusting to their faith or need for assurance of salvation. We have the same struggles even today. So we want to be encouraged because we know that each one of us is going through all such uh, uh, situations that are, uh, are hard. Well, suffering that produces endurance. Paul testifies, and so we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, this is Paul's description of the personal experience in suffering. Not a guarantee that we will have the same experience in our own pain. Not everyone who suffers endures through it. And not everyone who endures suffering experiences character that produces hope. But there are those stinky Christians who suffer knowing that there is hope because Christ suffered the same and so he promised that we Christians have to suffer so that we can at the end hope for the same and we shall succeed. We tend to think that spiritual growth is like other kinds of growth. The harder we work, more progress we make, it's not a reality. We build our physical strength through regular exercises and health diet. We build our intellectual capacity through disciplined study and mental exhaustion. We build our financial resources through hard work and investment. But in Christ, it is by the grace that we should not be doing hard work and all this that I'm mentioning. The psalmist to pray it, make me understand the ways of your perspective. That's the right way of doing things. I will mediate on your wondrous works in Psalms 119.27. And so our question for today is, how can we suffer but waiting in hope? So we say that uh, from the scripture of today that I may even read, we say Romans 8 from 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth it to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the exhaustless longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility of willingness, but because of him was subject in hope. The creation itself will also be set free from its slavery to corruption into freedom of glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation grooms and suffers the pain of childbirth together until now. So we are saying that uh, the long suffering of God allows you to make preparations for the next step. So you suffer, but God is allowing you to make proper preparations, proper decisions. As it is said in 2 Peter 3, 9, that the Lord isn't really being slow of his promise. As some people think, no, he's being patient for your sake. He wants everyone to repent. So in that suffering, be patient in repentance of what is going on. And also, the goodness of God leads you to a good end. You know that you are justified. And because you are justified, this is just saying that you have been put right with God. 
So you must make wise ideas, wise decisions, as you stay patiently in that suffering. Also, know that you are loved and not as the world loves you. So, loved because God knows you are a holy person, meaning you are separated from the world. You are not of this world. And so live a pure source of life that uh, will not be angering Christians. Suffer, but have love, have peace, be patient and love other Christians. In that God will know that uh, you are with him. And so, in our daily application, what should we do to see that we remain suffering, but Christ is for us? We say first, commit yourself to the practice of Bible study, prayer, worship, and other spiritual disciplines as a Christian. And this will help you to recognize that God is there as you suffer. You have that hope that one time, is going to rescue you. For me, this requires time every morning, every time. Do it in the morning, do it in the mid midday, do it in the afternoon, do it in the middle of the night. So every time let it be a routine for you as a Christian to suffer, but committing yourself to the practice of uh, those disciplines. But second, pray that God will speak to you as you listen. Pray that he will listen from your prayer and ask him to move in the mind of the heart as yielded in him by the spirit. You have that spirit, he will yet love to you and he will listen, seek from him. And that is the best way that you achieve of what he wants. And the third one is act on what God reveals unto you. Uh, put into practice the life of truth and wisdom that his spirit gives uh, you and this is the only aspect so i've said commit yourself to the lord also pray as you listen as you listen god will say no yes or he can say wait so just wait patiently but repenting of what is going on and act as he reveals to you and this is the holy spirit in you that is revealing i do not believe we have truth met in this but worship in our lives will be a life changed in somebody. And, uh, uh, and with this, I want to let you know that if you practice this in your suffering, in that hope, the spirit the Lord has put in you will enable you to overcome the sufferings, though you are suffering. May God bless you all. Mm -hmm.